Continuing from where we left off, we're going to add control nets into our prompts. I, just as always, am including a file with preset control net settings that you can use as a template and a starting point, but you can feel free to manipulate it as you wish. Um, but for now, we're just trying to follow ground truth. By ground truth, I mean the creator of the repo had done his own control net test that was moderately successful. So these were his input frames. This was the output that he achieved or she achieved. I'm not sure what their gender is. And some of their settings are in here or rather in a file that was included with the project. So I've created our own file. But before we get into the context of that file, I want to set up our directory. So just as usual, I made myself a little folder that has the images that we will be using for our project. And you'll notice that they are similar to the images that the creator used. I used auto 111 and control net to make similar images and clean them up a bit so everything would be kind of uniform. So if I go into the animate diff CLI prompt travel directory and I head into data, you notice that there's a folder called control net images and inside that folder there's test. Now there's a, a slew of control net directories. The only ones that you would want to be filling in are the ones that you plan on putting or rather the ones you plan on using. So if you notice there's nothing in canny, there's nothing in depth, etc. But there is there are rather some images inside of open pose and inside of seg. Oh, soft edge, sorry. The creator seems to only have used open pose and soft edge for his ground truth. So that's what we will be using. And notice that it's the same set of images inside of each folder, which is exactly what we will be doing. I used, as I said earlier, auto 111 to create some similar images. Now, because this is our ground truth, I don't want to manipulate this folder. So what I'm going to do is just head back to the control net image directory where all that, those folders are stored. And I'm going to copy test and paste it, rename it to test zero zero. And I'm going to head in there and into open pose. And I'm going to replace these images with my images and notice the naming convention of the images. There's four digits. And those uh, images are named by the keyframe that they are supposed to be manipulating. So image zero would be the first keyframe. Image 16 would be the 16th keyframe or 16th frame in the whole animation. And image 32 would be the 32nd keyframe. But oh, sorry, or frame in the animation. There's three keyframes, but they are frames 0, 16, and 32. So I'm going to copy those. I'm going to head in here and replace these files. I'm going to do the same thing inside of soft edge because that's what he or he or she used. I'll also supply these images for you guys so that you can use them to run your test to make sure everything's running properly. So now that we have our directory set up so that the project has access to our control net images, we're going to take a look at our prompt file so that we can understand how this is set up. Notice that I named the prompt file uh, prompt underscore control net this time. You don't have to name it that, but if you don't, make sure you fix that when you do your CLI command. So there's the control net map. Pardon. The control net map. And in here, you have various control net settings. The first setting that we're going to change is our control net image test. So the input image directory. Why? Because again, we didn't store our images in there. Let me close this. We didn't store our images in there. We stored our images in test 00. If you use test, it'll end up using these images. And that's why we want to adjust it so that it's taking the images out of test 00. I'm going to save that and scroll down to look at some of the important settings. A lot of this I'm going to skim over because I'm really, as I said, trying to get everybody's feet wet. You can easily go through this on your own. So the two uh, control net settings that I'm going to be looking at 
our open pose, which is here, control net open pose, and soft edge, which is here. The reason why I'm looking at those two is because those are the two that we so happen to be using in our control net settings, the soft edge and the open pose. So notice that there is an enable property and we're setting that to true and a use processor property and we're setting that to use preprocessor property and we're set, setting that to true. The preprocessor is the thing that is going to take our control net image or rather the image that we're passing into control net and it's going to turn it into the open pose model, you know, the one with uh, the different colored uh, sticks for arms, the body, uh, I believe white for the eyes, the face and the mouth. That's pretty much what the preprocessor is. Preprocessor is. It is the the thing that changes our images into the proper image, so that ControlNet can use it to manipulate our generation. Now I'm assuming that a lot of you know this because of Auto 111 and Stable Diffusion. If you don't, well, this will be your moment to learn. Now Soft Edge is the same thing. We're enabling it and we're setting the preprocessor. Here there are some settings for how you can set the preprocessor, but we aren't too worried about that. This file works and for now you're going to use it to get your feet wet and understand what's going on. And then from there I'll be posting more information on my socials, so like Reddit, um, Twitter, and I'm also on Discord in the... Where are you? Banadoko server. So I would recommend most definitely checking out this server. I can post the link. I usually post it on my Reddit. We are now going to run the CLI. Again, everything is set up. It was really that simple. Uh, actually, there's one more thing I'd like to discuss. So I manipulated our prompt map. The reason why I manipulated our prompt map is because I'm trying to keep it to ground truth. So for the control net uh, generation that he did, this was what he used, but we aren't creating the spider effect. So I removed that from it, but kept the you know smile standing, the walking, the running, etc. So notice the distance between the keyframes too. There's 0, 32, 64, and 96. So that's something to consider too. But again, don't get too bogged down in the details. Just worry about getting everything up and running and then starting to manipulate parameters bit by bit and you'll notice that it's a lot easier than what you think. We head to our animate diff CLI prompt travel directory as usual. We CMD into the address bar. Now we're inside of our directory so first thing we want to do is activate our virtual environment. Alright our virtual environment is activated. Now we want to pass the proper prompt in or not prompt, but CLI command so we can get it running. So we're going to do animate diff generate dash C, which now we're going to pass the path to our prompt file. And that's going to be config slash prompts slash. And what did we name our file? Let's find out. We go to config prompts. And as you can see, there's prompt underscore control net dot JSON. I pressed F2, that allows me to enter the file like if I was renaming it. I press Control A to copy all of it, Control C, and paste. And now I have the name set in there. I'm going to W, uh, dash W, which is the width of our generation, which will be 512, uh, dash H, which is the height of our generation, so that will be 768, dash L, which is the length of our generation, which will be 128. And then dash C, which, or sorry, capital C, which is the frame context or context of frames. I'm not sure how it's worded, sorry. And we'll press enter. Now, note a couple things are gonna start downloading when I do this. So give it some time as it works. So all it's doing its work, I just wanted to quickly cover the preprocessor images that I mentioned before. So if you head to the output directory where it's going to end up putting your frames and your generation, if we go into detect map, you notice that we have the control net open pose and we can see how it processed our three images. 
And we can also go into the, the soft edge one and see the way it processed our images. Now these are what will be used con to control our generation. So our generation is now complete. It did take a bit longer, as you can see here, it took about four minutes and 30 seconds. So replaying that again, you can see it moving through the poses that we gave it. I think that to a certain extent, replaying the video shows you enough about like, maybe you should distance your poses in terms of increasing the keyframe interval. So right now, if you look at our intervals, they are, uh, 0, 16, and 32. As you can see from the way the video plays, the third keyframe comes in way too fast. Boom. So it's not enough time for it to interpolate between them. But the first two, I think, interpolated nicely. It's still a bit jumpy, but they interpolated a lot nice, a lot more smoothly than the way that the third one came in. So one way that we could fix that is maybe making this 62, or sorry, 64 or 48 and maybe even adding a, a keyframe in between these two, the second and third keyframe, that is a little bit of an in-between between those two poses, so not as far away as 16, yet not as close as this image here. This way it knows how to move the camera bit by bit towards those poses that we desire. But other than that, I feel like it did a pretty good job. And the rest of it, it's really just generating. We didn't really give it much of a reference point as the last keyframe was at the 30 second keyframe, but the animation is 128 frames. So it gives you a good picture of how to control this thing. I know this was a very basic introduction, but again, I'm just trying to get everybody's feet wet because there's so many parameters in that JSON file. It can be very overwhelming. That's why the first video was just about prompt maps. The second video was about LoRa's embeddings and IP adapters. And the third video is realistically built upon all those concepts. So if you complete this video and you feel like you understand it enough to keep experimenting, you now know control nets, you now know LoRa's, you now know embeddings, you now know IP adapters and prompt maps all for the CLI. At this point, it's really all in your hands to now experiment. And as a community, we're here. The more you experiment, the more you show what you're able to pull off and explain and share your prompts, the more we're able to help each other and grow and really figure out the depth of this technology. So I just want to thank everybody for all the love and support. And let's keep on keeping on, man. Respect.